to get started now. My name is Sharon Tischer. I teach environmental law to undergraduates at the University of Maine. I'm also president of the board of the Natural Resources Council of Maine, which is a member of the Alliance for a Clean and Healthy Maine. And I'm on the, on the public policy committee of MAFCA, Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association, also a member of the Alliance for a Clean and Healthy Maine. And I represent the Alliance on the Governor's Task Force on Safer Chemicals in Consumer Products. We're here today to release a new study that shows that Maine people are polluted with unnecessary dangerous chemicals that come from common household products. This report, entitled Body of Evidence of Study of Pollution in Maine People, represents the first time in history that industrial chemicals were measured in the bodies of Maine people. The study was sponsored by the Alliance for a Clean and Healthy Maine, which is a coalition committed to protecting human health from toxic chemical exposure. The Alliance includes 45 Maine-based organizations representing health-affected children, workers, doctors, nurses, public health professionals, women, environmentalists, and impacted communities. Two years ago, the Alliance for a Clean and Healthy Maine began to design this study to answer a simple question. Are Maine people polluted with industrial chemicals? We collaborated with scientists at the University of Southern Maine and the Harvard School of Public Health. We recruited volunteers from around the state willing to donate samples of blood, hair, and urine. We sent those samples to be tested at a certified laboratories. In a moment, you'll hear from several participants about how they felt when they received their results and what it means to them. But first, we'll hear about the findings of the report and the implications for public policy. I'd like to first introduce Mike Beliveau, who is Executive Director of the Environmental Health Strategy Center and co-founder of the Alliance for a Clean and Healthy Maine. He is co-author of this report, Body of Evidence, and he is also a member of the Governor's Task Force on Safer Chemicals in Consumer Products. Mike. Good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, this study shows that our safety system for industrial chemicals is badly broken. We found an average of 36 industrial chemicals in each of the participants who volunteered their time and their bodily fluids to this cause. Uh, it shows that Maine people are routinely exposed to known hazardous chemicals. Because we know these chemicals have inherently dangerous properties, that is the ones that we tested, we believe they pose a potentially serious threat to human health. Some may say, well, at such low doses do we need to be concerned. But by comparison, uh, we know, for example, that a number of uh, prescription drugs exert their effects at the same low levels. For example, the antidepressant drug called Paxil, the uh, erectile dysfunction drug called Cialis, they work at a level of 30 parts per billion in the blood. Well, in this study, we found 30 parts per billion of the perfluorinated compounds, PFCs, or the Teflon chemicals, comparable levels. We believe that such low, low doses uh, may have a serious effect on health, particularly at, during vulnerable periods of exposure. This study further shows that these chemicals come from common uh, consumer products, household products, everyday plastic materials in our homes. They are a major source of chemical exposure from reusable water bottles that leach bisphenol A into the water that we drink to nail polish that exposes uh, women to phthalate compounds that cause reproductive harm in baby boys. These chemicals have pervaded our homes uh, in, in being in everyday products uh, throughout our lives. That's why we're concluding that our safety system for industrial chemicals is badly broken and needs to be fixed. We know that hundreds of known hazardous chemicals are put in products without any restriction whatsoever and without any requirement that safer alternatives be used. Further, we know that thousands of industrial chemicals are put into commerce without any health and safety testing at all. Uh, we're conducting a vast experiment on human health by exposure to thousands of chemicals in daily commerce. 
uh, they have not especially been tested for those most vulnerable in our midst, including the developing fetus, babies, and children who, are, who are face critical windows of vulnerability during sensitive uh, periods of development. We can no longer stand idle while the chemical industry from away brings these toxic chemicals and these untested chemicals into Maine in, in products that we buy and then leaves them in our homes, in our offices, in our bodies, in, a, in our environment. That's why we need government action to prevent pollution in Maine people. We're calling on the Maine legislature to take action to enact a new comprehensive safer chemical policy that would do several things. It would require safer alternatives to chemicals that are known to be hazardous. It would require industry to search for the safest substitute to hazardous chemicals. It would require industry to prove that chemicals in products are safe for babies and children. A new chemical policy would expand the public right to know about dangerous chemicals in products. And lastly, it would require the chemical industry to fully test all chemicals for health and safety impacts uh, before being allowed to continue to, to have those chemicals be in commerce. If we know that a chemical is hazardous, if we're finding it in our bodies, like this study shows, then we need to require safer alternatives. We can have nail polish without phthalates. It's already available on the market. We can have reusable water bottles without bisphenol A. They're already available on the market. We can have televisions without the DECA BDE toxic flame retardant. They're already available on the market. We can have stain resistant coatings without these Teflon chemicals because safer alternatives are available. All we need to do is enact a safer chemical policy to require that safer alternatives be used and to shift the burden of proof onto the industry and away from all of us who are having to show harm before actions being taken. The full report that's being released today, um, you may know, can be found on a new website that's being launched today. That's www.cleanandhealthyme, which stands for Maine, dot org. Cleanandhealthyme dot org. Uh, thank you. Up. Uh, <clears throat> there are some items out uh, outside of the room and. The most interesting is probably this sponge, because the theme of this report is that we are all sponges for these toxic chemicals. And uh, we want you to ring your legislature tour to ring out the toxic chemicals in our bodies. So. If I could add, in fact, uh, in many cases there's a double standard where products containing dangerous chemicals are banned in Europe and those same chemicals are allowed to be marketed in the United States. A perfect example is uh, phthalates in children's toys. Uh, phthalates were some of the compounds that were measured in all of our participants' bodies. And uh, Representative John Hink, who's in the back, um, began an effort this year to have Maine take leadership in getting phthalates out of children's products. That's going to be an ongoing effort, but uh, it's just simply unfair that other sovereign nations are protecting their citizenry more than the United States and, and, uh, and our state. So we need to, to level the playing field and have equal protection for everyone.